Well, I'm, I'm Morris Hawkes. And I'm Rodney Hawkes. And we came here in 1953. We're about four kilometres from the coast and 480 feet above sea level. We have a 57 hectare farm and um, out here you can see our boundary is um, just the side of that orange shed you can see down there. There's a river that flows around there. These, this plantation here is uh, about a hectare of uh, redwoods surrounded by um, a line of Japanese cedar on the outside, Cuprimera japonica. We were aware that the redwoods were inclined to be damaged by um, wind, so we went on the southern side until we got into the wind and at that point we planted Japanese cedar and the rest of it we planted in redwood. Um, bear the idea being that the Japanese cedar would, would shelter the, the redwoods. Um, on the bottom side of that we have some poplar along a drain to hold the bottom of a bank there. Uh, there's a row of pines across there it's just as a amenity planting uh, and we've got various uh, aesthetic plantings down the track the main track down there. As you can see there's a variety of different um, trees here. We've got Norfolk pines, we've got alder, um, we've got Japanese larch and over there we've got Japanese cedar um, and it's just a pleasant place to work. Um, we've pruned up some of the trees and under, as an understory we've planted other natives etc. Um, between the Norfolk pines and the Japanese larch we've planted natives um, which are designed for the tui, the rewa rewa and the pururi and um, the, you don't, not a lot is taken out of production because each of these shelter belts is about a metre and a half or a metre and a third apart and um, that's enough with electric fences to largely keep the stock out and um, you've, what you lose in the, that little strip is more than made up for in the, um, in the amount of um, growth you get in your grass from the shelter and your stock also do very well. There's a tui over there. <laughs> One of the benefits you get from uh, planting and um, well, I have a pest control program going here. We're in the um, possum control area and as an added bonus to help the bird life I've got a rat control program going as well as killing other predators such as cats and magpies and hedgehogs and mustelids and you really do notice the benefits you get from the uh, added uh, bird life that creates. Another there's a sideline to it about the rats we've got a, pa a patch of bush here behind the ha house here be uh, one and a half hectares and when Rod started to trap the rats, the amount of undergrowth that came up, that the, the, the rats must have been eaten, eaten the, the seeds when they hit the ground. And it's surprising, the amount of volunteer understory, because it was quite bare. No stock in, there was no stock in there or anything, no livestock, only rats. But mm. uh, they've got an appetite. They're like humans, they eat everything. <laughs> <laughs> Those pines were planted I think in 1982, so they're close on 20 years. Um, they were planted on um, paddock, there was grass there, so you can see the regrowth that occurs just from seeds coming up, or the, either in the ground or brought by birds. Um, and here we have uh, Cryptomeria japonica or Japanese cedar, and they were planted in 2001, so they are 11 years old now. Um, they're planted on the outside ring, around the outside, four, four metres apart, and the internal um, uh, trees are six metres apart, so they're planted out the final spacings, and every year I go through those and um, prune them, prune a few branches off them. Um, one of the problems with Japanese cedar is that they are softwood, so you do have to be careful, especially when they get up above the level of the surrounding understory of natives that you don't prune them too much because they will snap off in the wind. Um, these pine trees here, there weren't many of them, there's only about 60 of those pines, so I pruned them very high, some of them up to um, 12 metres, 
in height, prune, some are even actually a bit more than that and um, the theory is is that there's few of them, if you slow them down, they've got, they've got good space so they'll grow reasonably fast anyway and slow them down they'll get um, good t clear wood at the bottom and um, there's slower timber is more um, dense. dense. Denser timber. So one of the reasons that we planted these trees here is so it serves two purposes. One is that um, you get timber out of them. With the pines, we've also already had a crop of pines out of these, which we got $42,000 a hectare um, net. And the other reason, of course, is that on the steeper country, if you don't put it in um, trees, there is that possibility that it will slip. And on the, of course, on the outside, you do have um, the shelter. And one of the reasons that we've planted four metres apart on the outside is that the trees will grow better. They're outside trees, so they've got the sunlight and the extra nutrients off the paddocks. And also you create a shelter for the internal trees um, yeah. by planting them closer on the outside. Yeah, we've got about a little less than a hectare of pines here. They were planted in around about 1981. So they're um, 21 years old. And the reason that we planted them was that they're one of your typically steep-sided um, valleys, Taranaki steep-sided valleys with a watercourse down the bottom. And we figured that there was little reduction in production by taking those steep-sided bits of land out of production and putting them in trees and we get the southerly whistles through here and they act as a very good shelter um, against the southerly and um, we haven't lost any anything in production from taking that those, those uh, trees out of grass. This is a, um, a, a good uh, use of land I'd say because you'll get more money for the trees per hectare over the number of years that the trees are in than you would have if you had the corresponding amount of, of grass in cows. So per year you get more out of trees than you would out of if you had this land in grass. One of the things that, which we have done is to fence off all the waterways and in this region, Taranaki, or northern Taranaki, you don't actually have to do anything after fencing it off. The natives will come through, as you can see along here, the natives are just naturally growing. Most times, or sometimes you will have to plant natives to bring it, to get it started, but the advantage of that is that it's good for the environment, you get very little taken out of production, and it provides shelter um, for the stock, and uh, it's a win-win, it's really. Well, anything that's past a certain steepness, especially if it's um, southerly facing, it's well, well worth putting it in trees. If, certainly pines, because you've got a ready market for pines, um, the, the market has been tested, you know where you stand with pines. Um, and anything that's steep sided gully, especially if it's got a watercourse down the bottom, I think that planting it in, in trees is got there's three benefits really. The first is that you, if you especially if you plant it in pines, you've got a guaranteed uh, production crop at the end of it after 30 years. Um, and if it's steep land, you you could w you, you probably will get as much off that steep land as you would per year if it was in dairy cows. Um, the other one of the second benefit is that it's shelter. Um, you'll find that once you break the wind. The, uh, the grass grows better, it's a better environment for the grass and your stock appreciates it, both in the winter cold and uh, from the wind which, which comes through. Uh, and the third is that it's, it's, just, it's just pleasant, it's a lot more pleasant for you to work there. I mean, on this farm we've had people who've, um, who've just come through to have a look because it's a pleasant place to work. Um, and there, there's, yeah, it's, 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 it's far better to be working on a calm environment, whatever you're doing, than to have a whistling wind coming past your ears. It's, it's a lot more. It's a lot more pleasant, and for you, the stock and the grass. When we get a southerly, it's usually a three-day southerly, 
And when this, when this was the when pines, all all that there, uh, you could you could go up and feed out to the stock in a in a howling southerly, and it was as calm as you could possibly be. Yeah, one of the things I would say is that um, if you plan on planting something other than pines, you really should go and speak to the neighbours about roundabout to see what their experience has been on what grows best. Hitch, yeah. hitch up with somebody who belongs to the Farm Forestry Association yeah. in your area and ask them for advice because there's many trees that are site specific and we've found on this farm that some trees grow and some don't and we know now what will grow and what won't and, and even the difference between the bottom of the farm and the top of the farm is there's a difference so you really should have a chat to somebody that's had experience in your neighbourhood. In the years that um, the, more, the milk prices might be down, they're just that added buffer that you've got. You, trees don't have to be milled at a certain year. You can pick and choose if you've got a bad year um, for your other income stream. You can use the trees to bolster the income or you can wait until the prices for the trees are better than they might be. One of the things with trees is that you've got to be looking into the future and not just thinking of the immediate income because trees are there for the long term and you if you're going to be here on your farm or even if you're not going to be here on your farm for 30 years it's well worth planting them because they do add value to the land whether you're going to take them off for yourself or whoever buys that land you can say look these trees are due to be harvested in five or ten years time there's going to be an income there for you that's going to add value.